Yes, there were. And we're not just talking about the cashews. Right? <laughs> and then a lot of the nuts were home with my husband, including me. <laughs> no, we had a great time in fellowship, and we had more food than we knew what to do with. So thank you for participating in that. Um, let's see. Next Sunday, we will have sort of a Christmas program. We will have a Christmas program, uh, not a play though. I think Laura has some things uh, planned for the little kids. They're going to sing some songs. And then we want other people to sing Christmas songs. So these are not the only people in the church that can sing. I know there are others out there that can sing. And if you would like, you have a Christmas song you would like to do, we would like to just have sort of a Christmas musical next Sunday morning. Um, and we'll still let Pastor preach though. In place of our regular praise and worship, I'd like for us to do a lot of specials. So let me know if you are interested, if you would like to do a special on Sunday morning. And we're looking forward to that. Okay, um, any other announcements that I want to make? Um, I think before we um, do our offering this morning, we're going to have prayer. I know that Trish is going for surgery. So, and she wants to get going and pray over this morning, so we have her come on up. And uh, Trish, little bird, told me that. <laughs> I was, I was uh, going to ask anyway. All right, so, if you have faith and you believe that this is going to be her last surgery, Amen. it is going to be Amen. a big success in the name of Jesus. And she's going to be done with this, and I want you to come and gather around yeah. her. Let's join faith with faith. Yes. Yes. Let's believe for each other. Yes. Minister to each other. Yes. Building one another up in the most holy faith.
lift her up in her joy. Lift her up in her faith. Lift her up in her strength in her body. And help us, Lord, to stand together in faith, arm in arm, until the victory is won. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Father, we come before you for our brother. He has injured me. Lord, we're asking you to do that which only you can do. Lord, build us up. Lord, glorify yourself by building us up in our most holy faith. Lord, heal this need. Re re repair this need. Restore this need for your glory. For your glory, Father, in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. And now we pray for Josh, Lord, that you would bring to his body the miracle that he needs. Lord, double the faith of his mother. Double, the, double his own faith and strengthen him. Fill him with joy in the knowing that you, God, you, God, are the source of his healing. You, God, are the source of, of his health. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. In Jesus name. Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah.
question to you is how can we not worship the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords who came as a little child and a baby in a manger to worship him so that we could worship him. And I think about the shepherds out there just tending their sheep, minding their business. But yet, the host of heavenly angels letting the world know, letting those lowly shepherds know there is a Savior, there is Amen. hope for this world. Amen? Amen? And the wise men coming from a far country, all they had to follow was a star. How great was their faith. Yes. Amen? Yes. And how great our faith must be. And these yes. words have meaning. Yes. Hallelujah. Praise your name, Jesus. Oh. We just love you, Lord. We praise your name today. Those angels are still declaring in the heavens the coming of the Lord. And one of these days, there's going to be a trumpet blown. Amen. It'll be a different kind of salutation that day.
those that we admire. Amen? Amen. I, I too had fun last night. Almost, almost a little too much. <laughs> Amen. That was the that was the biggest can of cashews yes. that I ever saw. Yeah. And uh, one of one of my many weaknesses in this world is I love cashews. And uh, and I was blessed that I was able to maneuver through the game with the help of my brother Jim. And uh, I was able to take that great, big, huge can of cashews home as my gift from the Chinese Christmas last night. And then, to put icing on the cake, I was sent home with all the leftover cashews from the meal earlier. So, I got a double portion. Amen. So, I, I, I want you to pray for me. Uh, if I have too much cashews too often, they won't be good for my diet. So y'all pray for me that I can find that little canister that my nutritionist gave me. It's, it's a little serving thing. And I'm only supposed to have, it's, it's, a, it's about a quarter of a cup. And that's all the nuts I'm allowed in one given day. So based on the amount of cashews I took home, if I can find that little portion cup, I'll, I'll be good till next Christmas. <laughs> but you're going to have to pray for me if I do that. Because I don't, I, 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 I don't hold back enough when it comes to things that I love. And I hope the same thing can be said that I don't hold back when it comes to loving my church. I do love you and I appreciate you. And what an honor it is to be the pastor of Van Grove. I was sharing with the Sunday school class this February at our annual business meeting. I come up for re-election. So you all start praying now as to whether or not God wants me to stay here for another term. Amen. Uh, I, I think I do, but I just, I want the will of the Lord. Amen. And uh, pray that the Lord would just give me that, that special anointing that we need so that our church can just flourish now more than it ever has before. Amen. 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 The fire. Fire. Holy Ghost in fire Amen. with signs following. Amen? Amen. Let's turn to the book of Matthew, chapter 2. Praise the Lord, praise the Lord, praise the Lord. Beginning in verse 1 of chapter 2. Now, when Jesus was born in Bethlehem of Judea, in the days of Herod the king, behold, there came wise men from the east to Jerusalem, saying, Where is he that is born king of the Jews? For we have seen his star in the east, and are come to worship him. Father, anoint now my mind, my voice, anoint now my heart, that I might bear your message to your flock today. Draw us into the very throne room of heaven today, dear Lord. Fill us with the joy and the peace and the wisdom that we need, Lord, for this day and this hour, that we might truly be that glorious church without spot or blemish, washed in the blood of the Lamb. We pray for faith. We pray for wisdom. We pray for understanding that you may be glorified. And all God's children said, Amen. 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 Now these wise men, we know them as kings. We sing songs about these wise men. But what we don't often talk about is the fact that these wise men, these men that journeyed from the east, that made their westward journey following that star, None of them are known to be descendants of Abraham. Not one of them is known to be a descendant of Abraham. What they are known to be is stargazers. They watched the heavens. Some might say they were astronomers. Some might even say that they were astrologers. The Word doesn't tell us any of that information. But it does tell us that they 
were studying the heavens enough that they saw that symbol, they saw that sign, they saw that star, and they not only saw the star, they understood the meaning of that star. They understood that that star was a, a signal from God. It was a sign from God that there was a new king born in Bethlehem. I've often wondered why these men are actually included in the nativity record at all until we begin to see and research and understand their purpose for going to 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 find Jesus, the, the, the baby king. Now they didn't know he was Jesus at the time, they just knew he was the king of the Jews and that he was born and, and that the star led him there. But when they began to bear their gifts and give their gifts, we understand that they were there to identify this newborn king in his deity, in his godness, as the solution, the permanent solution, the eternal solution for sin. We look at their gifts, gold, frankincense, and myrrh, and we understand that each and every one of these were gifts worthy to be given to a king but they were also rather prophetic in their meanings of these gifts. Not only the, 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 the gold and the frankincense and the myrrh were signs of his deity, they were also signs of the life that he was going to live, the sinless life that he was going to live, and the sacrifice that he was going to become for mankind's sin. I'm glad that these three wise men made their journey. I'm glad that they spared no expense to make that journey. It wasn't like they jumped on an Amtrak and was there in an hour. This journey required months of planning and weeks of, we don't know how far they came, but we know that any reasonable journey from the from the areas of the world that are east of Jerusalem would have required a caravan and that this caravan would have required lots and lots of workers and lots and lots of provisions. This was not a simple nor a cheap undertaking. These men were so moved by what that star showed them that they changed the course of their lives for a season to make it to Jerusalem. But why did they come? They told us. They told us. We saw the star. We have come to worship him. Worship him. Let's dwell for a little bit on worship. This morning as we were singing the songs that we've heard all of our lives, they were still songs of worship to our hearts and to our minds today because the words still have the same power. They still have the same weight. They still have the same joy and, and, and hope in them as we sing those songs. And we sing the same songs year after year. You know that there's not too much in our lives that really changes all that much from year to year anyway. Amen? Amen? You're pretty much the same person you were last year at this time. Pretty much. So they came to worship. When I get to thinking about worshiping, the first thing that popped into my mind was that unborn babe, John the Baptist. When the salutation between Elizabeth and Mary came. That unborn babe leapt in his mother's womb. He worshipped. Jesus wasn't even born yet. Amen. Amen. And we all know about the angels worshipping and the whole heavens coming about to worship. To worship Jesus. And then I think about all the other aspects of worship. Yes, the angels and and, and, and yes, the babe in, in its mother's womb. Even the worship of Joseph and Mary taking the Christ child to the temple 
to honor and worship God and to, to believe them. And, and think about this. Even, even when Jesus was walking this earth and in the middle of his ministry, and one of the things that he was doing as he went from place to place is he was healing person after person after person after person. And what did he tell many of those people? Go to the priest and show yourself to the priest and offer to God the item of worship, the, 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 the obedience of worship because of the great gift that's been given to you in the healing of your body. Oh, think about this. He was telling those people, Jesus said, go worship. You go worship God. also like to think about the, the aspect of prayer being worship. Amen. Come on, church. Mm -hmm. I believe that praying is actually an action of our believing. And, and what is it we believe? Well, we believe God's real. Yes. We believe God's real. Amen. <laughs> and we believe that He's our source. Come on. We believe that he's all powerful. He's all knowing. He's ever present. And he's the watcher of our soul. He's the watcher of our body. God cares more about you than you care about yourself. The only reason that God cares more about you than you care about yourself, the only reason I can say that is because See, God knows everything perfectly. I wish I'd have known some things as a younger man more perfectly about taking care of my body. But I didn't know those things. I didn't, I didn't, I didn't have those things right in my mind. But I now have a, work, a watcher that's a part of me. And, 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 a, and a part of the way that God watches over my soul is through the Holy Spirit dwelling within me. Praise the Lord. Do you know when we get to studying this place that we're all planning to go someday called heaven? Have you ever, have you ever really looked at it? Everybody believe in heaven, raise your hand. Amen? Sure we do. We believe in heaven. Did you know that one of the most mentioned activities in heaven is worship? Amen! And I when we get to heaven, I don't know if anybody's going to stand up and be the song leader or not, but <laughs> think about it. I, 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 you know, I don't think in heaven, when we start worshiping in heaven, I don't think the song leader's going to ask it. Well, now we get to heaven. Oh, how about you clapping your hands today? Show some signs of life out there. I don't think that's going to be in heaven, amen? Amen? And I'm not criticizing Sister Nancy for asking to stand. Don't take it that way. Amen. She just, she just stood up before y'all and confessed that she was one of the nuts I took home last night. <laughs> I don't agree that my wife is a nut. She's way, way too sweet to be That's considered. Right. <laughs> oh, we need some help? <laughs> <laughs> I tell you what, seeing, seeing Delene sitting there with her baby in each arm and in the house of God, it just thrills my heart in ways I can't expect. Glory to think To think that those little babies are getting what they're getting and feeling what they're feeling in the house of the Lord. Amen. Now we talked about how praying is worship, and we talked about how when we're presenting ourselves before the, the, the priest is worship, and, 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 and all, the, all the different forms of worship. But there's another form of worship that I want to relate to just a little while this morning, and that's the worship, worshiping God by serving Him. Serving God is a form of worship. See, because we believe all these things about God, then we serve. We serve each other. We serve our 
world. We are so blessed at this church. Amen. We are so blessed at this church to have such faithful members and such giving members that serve and serve and serve and never stop serving, doing more, more than can, 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 can ever be imagined. And I think when, I think when we arrive and, and we've, we've all made it over to the other side, we're going to learn that even though we know about a lot of serve, serving in this church, I think we're going to find out about a lot of stuff that you do that nobody knows, that you just do it for God's glory, but it's building up the kingdom of God, and it's helping you. Amen. You know, if we see serving God as a form of worship, then we need to be kind of like these wise men. We need to, to, to speak out. that Listen, we've come here to worship God. They said, we, we've come to Jerusalem. We've come to find the king of the Jews. We've come here to worship him. Yes. He's worthy of worship. He, he deserves to be worshipped. Yes. And it's only by us worshipping our God that we can truly convince the world of what we believe. You know, you can believe something all you want. And you can even tell people what you believe all you want. But it's much more effective to show people what you believe by what you do. Amen. Amen? We have to go to the world. We have to speak to them. We have to speak to them about love. We need to speak to them about the plan of God. See, God has a plan for every person. Amen. But the enemy sometimes diverts people away from the plan of God. But a part of our worship can be serving God by helping people find the plan of God for their life. I overheard a conversation. A couple of ladies were criticizing a certain church. Not around here. But they were criticizing this church. And one of them said, I just can't go to that church. There are so many people in that church that they were just drunks and thieves and mean and hungry. Just the worst people in town go to that church. And just as she was saying that, inside of me said, oh, that's exactly what God wants in his church. Amen? Amen. Hey, come on, it is, exactly. The Lord didn't let me say anything to those two ladies. But I wanted to. But the Holy Spirit didn't want me to. You know, another way of serving is binding up the sick. Going and sitting with somebody or taking them a meal. Ministering in some way to help them during that time of sickness. Another, time, another way of worshiping God by serving is helping all of these multitudes of grieving people I was at a funeral this week. And in that room were five different ministers who have recently lost their mate. In, in, in the last few months, five of them, five of them there that were dealing with their grief by helping a brother deal with his grief at the loss of his dear wife. You know, another way we can worship as we help these grieving people is just by being a pillar of faith. Yes. Not letting the circumstances change us. 
Not letting the, 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 the sin and the sickness, the disease, the wars, the famine, the, 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 the disease, not letting any of this thing change who we are, change our faith. So we can be that, that signpost, if you please, saying this way to Jesus, this way to hope, this way to help. This is for you, Brother Ron. Be that rock yes. that somebody needs. Amen. That no matter what goes on in their life, they can come to you as their rock of faith, their rock of prayer, that, that dependable person that never changes. Be a living memorial to God. Amen. Now, I read in the Bible, and I believe this with all my heart, that Christians are to strive to be just like Jesus. Amen. Glory. And you know what? Jesus' whole life was a life of service. And it was a life of worship. I didn't come here to do my will. I came to do God's will. And he says in Luke 19 and 10, For the Son of Man is come to seek and to save that which was lost. Oh, glory. Brother and sister, do you remember what it was like for you when Jesus found you? Or I say you found Jesus, whichever the case may be. Come on, do you remember? Do you remember that joy? Come on, do you really remember that joy? Yeah. Now I'm talking about that. I'm not talking about that. I'm talking about woo! <laughs> you know that time when you finally realized that God had forgiven you? chains getting broken. Amen? And all every time I think about those, I, I just I just see those chains of sin falling off of me, falling off of you, and being free, no longer bound, not even contaminated by the sin. Come on, church! Yes. Do you remember when He made you whole? Yes. Righteous. He moved you from an improper place of standing before God to a proper place standing before God. Jesus himself took you, took me, stood us before the God that created it all and said, here, this soul, this child is now standing before you, Father, in righteousness. Not the filthy rags of their own righteousness. They're standing before you in my righteousness. And this is the best way to say it. When you were reborn. Amen. 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 <laughs> you stop being an orphan child or a stepchild. Come on. Bound by Satan's contamination and Satan's lies. And you were born again into the family of God. Heirs and joint heirs with Jesus Christ the righteous. Made holy by His blood. Made perfect by His blood. Yes. <laughs> it's okay to shout those babies are not going to hurt. Not one man. So let's follow the example of the three wise men. Let's seek, let's give, and let's worship. <clears throat> oh, well, okay, you don't want to go far that, that far back? Well, let's just turn it back to Jesus then. 
Let's follow the example of Jesus. Seek, I come to seek you to save that which is lost. I come to give, what? Eternal life. Uh, uh, eternal residence in a home you don't even have to build. And by the way, not one of you will have a mortgage on your place in glory. If our tax man doesn't straighten up pretty soon, I'm going to have a place for sale out in Prairie Creek. <laughs> Come on now, church. Got to pay those taxes. I know that this is not a sermon about this particular subject, but I'm just going to put a little commercial in here. Property taxes are an immoral sin. And nobody should have to pay property taxes because they own a piece of land. <clears throat> well, will you forgive me for doing that? <laughs> the example of Jesus. You see, right now, right now, our world is overflowing with sick, hurting, confused, angry, and dying people. We all know that. So let's seek them out and bring them to Jesus. Let's don't wait for them to come knocking on our door. Jesus didn't wait for us to come knocking on the doors of heaven and saying, let us in. He came seeking us. He came looking for Bill Sanders. He came looking to put your name in there. He came to seek and to save that which was lost. And if anybody was lost, it was me. Well, actually, it was us. Now let's give to these people that one gift that we can give. The gift of grace. Grace. We know this message so... Folks, it's grace that has us sitting here in this room, happy in Jesus. Believing that if the trumpet should sound or if someone should drop the atomic bomb and blow the whole thing up, we're going to be all right because we know grace. Yes. So let's give grace to the hurting. Let's give grace to the sick. Let's give grace to the confused. Let's give grace to the angry. Let's give grace to the dying. Yes. Let's worship our God by serving the sick, the hurting, the confused, the angry, and the dying. Let's fill this church with people that don't have any hope. Let's fill this church with people that are sick and dying. Let's fill this people, this church with people that are addicted. Folks, do you realize that the only thing that can make this a better church is that there were more of us in it? Yeah. Lots more of us. I haven't made any progress on my bumper stickers yet. Don't know why, I can't explain why. But one of these days, the Lord willing to be in my help, I'm going to have you those bumper stickers that say Elm Grove, the perfect church for you. Mm -hmm. Amen. Don't struggle over that word. Don't struggle over that word perfect. Did you know there are people in our community right now that this is the only church that can minister to them? Well, we got to go find them. We got to bring them in. Let's fill this house of worship with the lost, with the sick, with the hurting, with the confused, with the angry, with the dying. And I know there's problems that arise when we do this. I know that there are difficulties that arise when we do this. But Elm Grove, I want to remind you that from the very beginning, the world said we couldn't build a church here at Elm Grove. But they were wrong, weren't they? Because every time Elm Grove's had a need, Elm Grove's God has come on the scene, and Elm Grove's God has supplied that need according to His riches and glory by Christ Jesus, and not according to what size our paychecks are. Glory! Several years ago, I had a 
dream. And in this dream, an individual that I didn't even know approached me, wanting to know if I was the pastor of Elm Grove Assembly of God Church, Tolbert, Texas. And I assured them that I was. And they said, well, God told me to bring you something. And I said, well, all right. I'm here. I'll take it. And it was a very, very, very large check. I mean, multiple, lots of, lots of zeros. <laughs> lots and lots of zeros. And they handed me that check. And they said, the only thing that God told me to tell you was build it. Build it. I took and I interpreted that dream to be building a building of worship. But folks, I believe that what that message was about was not building buildings, but it was about building the kingdom one soul at a time. Amen. One sick, one hurting, one confused, one angry, one dying person at a time until we had reached all that we are commissioned by God to reach. Hallelujah. Let's fill this house. Yes. Let's fill this house to the full of the overflowing. Yes, there'll be problems. God's a problem solver. Yeah. Yes, there'll be needs. God's a supplier. Yeah. Yes, there'll be questions about this, that, and the other. But you know what? God knows everything about everything. Yeah. And all we need to do is worship our God by serving Him one soul at a time. Amen. Let's bow our heads and let's take ourselves individually into the throne room of God. Let's go there and ask God, Father, is there something you would have me to do to build your kingdom here in Elm Grove? Is there a person, a family, a school, a job, a store? marketplace, a restaurant, is there a place that you would have me to be in my service for you, to reach the lost, the hurt, the dying, the confused? Let the Holy Spirit speak to your heart today, saints, as you make yourself available to God by volunteering to serve God, by volunteering to hold our God's standards high. To be that pillar of faith. Oh, Father. I ask you to use me. Work through me. Oh, as an example to my congregation, to my flock. Show me the soul that I need to speak to. Show me the place that I need to go and share the good news of your healing, of your mercy, and most of all, the message of your grace. Oh, Jesus, be Jesus in me. Yes. Jesus, be Jesus in me. And fill a grove with those that need you the most. By our service, our worship, by our faithfulness. Lord, as we look upon ourselves in the natural, Lord, we're facing a lot of troubles and trials right now. COVID and political unrest and such anger and hatred in our world. Oh, God, help us to be that lighthouse as a church and, Lord, me as an individual. Lord, that we can love people into your kingdom no matter what their station in life, no matter what their tragedies, no matter what their they're, they're, they're difficult. Lord, let us be your hands and let us be your feet as we worship you by serving you. Touch us physically, Lord. 
not just to spiritually or emotionally, but touch us physically, Lord, that we might be able to go that extra mile, do that extra deed, make one more effort in building your kingdom. We ask it because we believe in you, Lord. You are all-powerful. You are all-knowing, and you are ever-present. And we truly believe that every prayer we pray comes right before you and is honored and is kept by you, Father, because we're your children. We thank you, Lord, for faith. We thank you, Lord, for joy. And we thank you for peace. And we ask you now, Lord, fill us up. Not just the numbers in the room, but Lord, fill us up as people. Fill us up spiritually. Fill us up with your joy and your love and your mercy.